Okay. Well, welcome, Tim Fox, back to the bonus material. We've just finished recording the podcast, and uh, now we want to talk about creating a digital disciple-making strategy. To remind everybody, uh, in case it's been a little while since they listened to the podcast, you put out a comment on Facebook about why most churches should probably not be live streaming their services. You gave eight compelling reasons, and you gave four really good alternatives that are not anti-tech but that help the church lean into its strengths, especially the smaller church, to lean into the strength of relationship and incarnational ministry rather than the digital ministry that most of us, quite frankly, aren't doing all that well anyway. But <laughs> one of the alternative sub points was to be more strategic about your digital presentation and particularly about your digital disciple making. So what are some ways that small churches especially can start thinking more strategically about their digital disciple making strategy? Well, I think it has to start with uh, just disciple making strategy in general, right? Like, so you need to ask a few questions like, what is a disciple? Um, And maybe it helps to break that into what what do we believe a disciple knows and what do we believe a disciple lives and what do we believe a disciple does? And once you have that question, you can start to evaluate, right? Like evaluate your Sunday school, your small groups or whatever you do, and then evaluate your social media, your online, your website, all of those things as to are these things hurting us or helping us as we attempt to make this particular type of disciple. And then there's probably a list of what's missing. What's missing in making uh, disciples that know and live and do this. And once you start to get that, like you get there, you start to, you can brainstorm all the different possibilities, right? Like anything at this point of, you know, and it might be, uh, short written posts that go out on a weekly basis. Um, I know I have one pastor, he does a Facebook live prayer time for the people of his church every Saturday morning for 30 minutes and they love it and they're engaged with it. And I see it. I'm not, it's in Spanish. So that's why I, I wouldn't, but even still, I probably wouldn't sit for 30 minutes as he engaged in prayer with his people, but they are. And um, so I think we have to just kind of ask that question, like what might work? How are people engaging with social media at all? Like, are they, um, are they watching short videos right now? The reels and the short videos are the hottest thing. TikTok goes places and most of us aren't on there. We're barely on Facebook, right? And what we're doing is we might be copying um, the U version verse of the day image and posting that every day. And then our Sunday morning live stream on Sunday. And we think we've engaged with people on social media, but we're not engaging with anyone. So what will actually, what will people who are living online actually engage with and what can we do with them that could lead to them being more like Christ knowing, living, and doing the things that we believe a disciple does. Um, Again, there might be short form videos. It might be on TikTok. It might be a Zoom small group, but not like a Sunday school class on Zoom where, you know, I have notes behind me and I'm at a chalkboard teaching, but a conversation. Uh, More think like a, a Wesley class meeting or a band, a place where people can use the tech to connect in a really well, real way. So I think it goes back there. And then we can, once we have this whole big list, we can ask what's most important right now. Like, what can we do? Like, we might not have the ability or the resources to do all the things we want to do. Even if we did, we probably shouldn't do all the things we want to do. But what are one or two things we can start with and try and see it as an experiment, like three three to 12 months tops, we're going to experiment with this, see if it gets traction. And if it doesn't, then we'll move on to something else. It goes back to the live stream, right? Like we've done three to 12 months. It didn't work. Let's move yeah. on. Yeah. But we're not, yeah. we're not good at moving on. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this is a, a phrase that I am using more regularly when I do the in-person conferences with small church pastors is I tell them the expiration date is your friend. Um, 
our, mm-hmm. our, our, our model for ministry is we start a ministry and we're just going to do this every Wednesday or every Thursday or every Saturday morning. We're just going to do this. And we end up doing it until it kind of just fades out into nothing. And then it feels like a failure <laughs> instead of saying, we're going to do yeah. this for the next three months and then see how it goes or the next six months or this year for home groups, we're going to do it this way. <laughs> our church changes up the way we do home groups just about every year. It gives people a little more variety, yeah. gives them a chance to meet other people. Um, and and even when it's been successful, it's been like, let's change it up next year and, and see what else we can do. And online, especially, methodologies change so fast and people get bored with the same yeah. thing so quickly. So you're, what you're yeah. talking about here is looking at ways that people can engage online in a disciple-making context, match it up with what your strengths are, um, but make it make it relational, make it engaging, uh, make it a way that people can yeah. connect. Is this, when you talk about disciple making online, do we need to see it primarily or exclusively as a bridge to the in-person or is it something that even after they're coming in person can be supplemental to it? How would you, yeah. how would you approach that? <clears throat> I think it depends on the situation and the person, the environment, like, with with my situation, there are um, I have a group of pastors that I mentor, and we spend ninety minutes every month on Zoom and engage in person a couple times a year for a longer period of time. And so, I think that it can be both and. Um, and there may be people who live far away, and they're not you're not able to do that. But that's not your primary audience. If you happen to end up in a discipleship relationship with someone in another state, that's great. Leverage it, make the most of it. But long-term, they should be in a community, in their community, where they can really be a part of what's happening. So we want to kind of hold that balance. And I, when I think about this, I think about what, what could we do that the person who won't come into church might pay attention to. And I don't even think we've asked that question. We've assumed they'll like what we like. We assume they'll want to hear us sing and hear my my 30, 40, 50 minute sermon when they don't like, so what is it that they might actually engage with and look at, and maybe what we do is we look at what those people are actually engaging with online. So we watch and we see and observe, so then we know what to do to to connect and reach them where they're at. I still think digital discipleship is going to be a supplementary thing to the church's primary ministry focus. And it's a, if we're going to be online, be intentional about it. And if you're not, then don't. Like, you, you don't have to be on Facebook to be relevant. You don't have to be on Instagram and TikTok. Your once a month post on those things isn't making you relevant. It's not connecting you with anyone. You're still just as invisible as if you weren't there. You just now feel guilty about only posting once a month and feel like you ought to be doing more. So just stop and like focus on people. There was a time this was early on and when we did the church restart, there was a time when occasionally on Sunday morning, there would be more people on stage than in the seats. Um, the band would start to play and there'd be like three of us as that first song was getting started. And I would get upset with God um, and like, what in the world are we doing? Why did you ask me to do this? Why look at all of these empty seats. And there was, it was funny one time, this is, I, it might as well have been audible. He just said, son, you're not that good. Be thankful anybody showed up. Love and serve and teach the people who are here. Let me take care of the empty seats. Wow. And I was like, okay, you kind of put me in my place so that I appreciate it. But um, it just reoriented. He just had to get my eyes off the empty seats. And I think, I think that we are engaging online not because we believe we have an opportunity we're saying that we're engaging online because we can't accept the empty seats 
in our sanctuaries and we don't know what to do about it. And this is the easy answer that if, if I, you know, if I have 30 people in my, in my, in my sanctuary, but another 30 people got online, I feel twice as good. Um, I don't feel as bad about the fact that in my mind, it was only, I just, I think all of us as pastors should stop using the words only and stop using the word just like, we're not just anything. Mm -hmm. We are chosen, put here by God for a purpose. And we're not only a small church. There's not only 30 people, 30 people showed up to hear you talk for 30 minutes. That's pretty miraculous in this day and age, like that anybody would show up to yeah. listen to his talk, yeah. right? Especially and when, as you say, you're not that people. good. <laughs> right, right, right. I can accept it. I can own it. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I was, maybe I'd be on TV or live streaming. <laughs> I, well, I, I I think your entire approach so far, just, I mean, we've only known each other from this podcast and these, this bonus material, but I get the sense from you that asking better questions is a huge part of your entire approach to ministry. It, it's a part of mine as well. And I love your heart in that. So thank you again, Tim, for the podcast and for this bonus content, for yeah. the encouragement for all of us to ask better questions questions and to um and engage people in the life of the congregation and simply uh as and more more than just as a product to be consumed but as a mm. community to be a part of i really appreciate that tim thanks so much for your time today yeah pure joy man i really appreciate it <laughs>